space exploration, an idea that used to be championed the most by progressive leftists, most notably the early Russian cosmists of the 1890s and the 1900s. But ever since the space race became dominated by billionaire oligarchs, much of the left have adopted a very negative view towards space exploration. The idea that space exploration and science in general should be in the service of the people is a principle that the left should reclaim. Space science is not an arena that the left should abandon and allow corporatists to monopolize. Upon first glance, space exploration doesn't seem like a leftist cause. Perhaps that's because it's the billionaire class that are currently making it their own. Recently, the cosmos has been on the verge of being turned into commerce, by big tech oligarchs who want to marketize space travel and privatize mineral wealth for themselves. Billionaires leading space exploration does not just entail colonizing space, it means colonizing the future. Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are the leading drivers of the modern push to privatize and colonize space, through their respective companies SpaceX and Blue Origin. Their stated goals of space exploration do differ slightly, with Elon Musk claiming to want to colonize Mars, while Jeff Bezos has more interest in building space colonies in orbit, what are called O'Neill Cylinders, which are portrayed a lot in science fiction but are yet to become a reality. Back in 2016, Elon Musk claimed that he would be sending rockets to space by 2018. That obviously never happened, but it hasn't ended his obsession. The line between spectacle and real objectives remains a bit blurry. It's hard to tell if billionaires are just doing this as part of a spectacle to boost their egos and to blow some of the cash that they don't need. Elon Musk is notorious for questionable innovation PR stunts like Neuralink and the Hyperloop, so it's a bit hard to take him seriously. The YouTube channel Adam Something has a bunch of videos about Elon Musk's clownish innovations. Some of them are so ridiculous that they just seem like PR stunts. But regardless if their visions of space exploration are serious or not, Musk and Bezos have very little stake in the well-being of the population, and their visions of space are designed for wealthy people just like themselves, with little mention of where the working class would fit in. They've built their wealth on exploitation and their visions of the future are more or less just an extension of their present actions and the present system that they benefit from. Good old capitalist realism. The evolution from space race competition between nation states like the US and the USSR towards competition between private billionaires represents the overall decline of the nation state and rise of late stage neoliberal capitalism ever since the 1980s where corporations control the state, rather than the state being in control of corporations. These space billionaires don't even try to hide who would be served by their visions of the future. Elon Musk has given multiple figures for the cost of a ticket to Mars. Musk has stated before that tickets would probably cost around $500,000 to a million dollars per ticket. But how would the working class afford tickets? Elon Musk actually tweeted before about a plan for Martian indentured servitude, where workers would take on loans to pay for their tickets and then pay them off later because there will be a lot of jobs on Mars. Now all of this is not to say that we need to halt space exploration. The collective interest of humanity is served by learning more about the solar system, but the goal of such missions must be driven by gaining scientific knowledge, enhancing global cooperation, and collective prosperity, not national chauvinism and profit making. Space exploration led by billionaires and late stage capitalism will only lead to more inequality and it will certainly not save us from the climate dystopia that billionaires would rather escape from than help prevent. Plus, do we really want private billionaires to monopolize the supply of useful natural resources which could be used in a more egalitarian way if commonly owned by the public? I mean, many countries privatize their water, so... In the unlikely event that technology ever allows interstellar colonization to be both possible and profitable, it's safe to assume that the result will look a lot more like Blade Runner than Star Trek. Definitely if people like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are leading the way. Space exploration should be about serving society's needs and advancing humanity. But before space can be explored in a way that benefits all of humanity, existing social relations must be transformed not projected into the cosmos as part of a new colonial project. 
The problem with most visions of space exploration and cyberpunk futurism is that it fails to envision a new alternative society with different social relations outside of capitalism. Instead, they just project the logic of capitalism onto space, or with more robots and cool gadgets. Thus, we need an alternative vision of space exploration. A space exploration for the people, not the rich elites. In this video, I will outline and evaluate arguments in favor of space exploration and common arguments made against it. After that, I will leave it up to you to decide what's right. Feel free to share your opinions and thoughts in the comments below, after watching the video. Before getting into the arguments for and against space exploration, if you enjoy content like this on the One Dime channel, as well as the One Dime Radio podcast channel, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. You will get access to our private Discord server where you can chat with me and other viewers, and you will also get access to exclusive podcasts. Patreon is the only way that small channels like this are able to exist and still make high quality content. Now let's take a look at the most common arguments made against space exploration. Number 1. It's too expensive. Space exploration is a waste of money and time, and we should solve our problems here on Earth first before even considering going to space. There is this false dichotomy that we should only do space exploration after solving things like poverty, inequality, or healthcare. But why not both? The former is not stopping the latter. These objectives are not diametrically opposed. This binary false dichotomy is the same sort of logic as conservative arguments that say that we shouldn't be teaching French literature or cinema studies at public universities, because they're supposedly a waste of taxpayer money. That we should only be studying math, economics, and the hard sciences like medicine and engineering. Also, if you want to look at a government department that is a waste of resources, then look no further than the US military. At the time of recording this video, the official Pentagon budget is $753 billion. Meanwhile, NASA's budget is just $23 billion. Let's maybe rethink our priorities a little bit. Additionally, the government's fiscal budget is not a problem for governments that issue their own currency. If you watched my previous videos that explain the modern monetary system, then you would know that governments that issue their own currency cannot run out of money that government spending does not rely on tax revenue or borrowed money, at least not at the federal level. Taxpayer money didn't actually pay for space exploration in the US or the USSR. Inflation is also not automatically caused by increased government spending. How would spending more money into a public space exploration program cause the prices of goods and services at home to rise? They wouldn't. While private enterprises can run out of money and investors, governments cannot. This is because private corporations are currency users. The federal government is a currency issuer. Which is another reason why space exploration should be a publicly led endeavor. Right now, most of the best American engineers prefer to work for SpaceX rather than NASA. This is largely because NASA is severely underfunded. NASA, once the crown jewel of the public sector, has been slowly sold off to private contractors in the neoliberal era. In 2015, Congress passed a bill to defund NASA's Earth Science Program by nearly $300 million. But this could easily be fixed with more funding. What we have are resource constraints, not fiscal constraints. Governments cannot run out of their own currency. The only constraints are real resources, human labor, and Earth's raw materials. Maybe we should allocate more of our real resources towards space exploration and less towards the military. Today, many of our brightest astrophysicists and aerospace engineers are caught up in military departments and weapons manufacturers. We should maybe use their talents for science and education instead. Advanced technology for space travel and things like asteroid mining are still being built and will develop faster depending on how much funding and resources go into them. However, regardless of what is possible right now, some people are against space exploration in general because they see it as an extension of the same expansionist logic that characterized Western colonialism and modern imperialism. The term space colonization can be very misleading because people will hear the word colonization and are understandably immediately hostile to the idea. Colonization and imperialism are both bad and should be opposed by anyone who advocates for an emancipatory politics. But here's the difference. Rocks are not people. 
It should be obvious that mining asteroids is not the same thing as taking over countries, enslaving people, and stealing their natural resources. On the contrary, if possible, it would be a lot more ethical to extract raw materials from asteroids rather than from mines in the global south by underpaid exploited workers. Also, so far there is zero evidence that aliens exist in our solar system. Definitely not near the asteroid belts near us. Here's a random fun fact. Early socialist Russian cosmists like Alexander Bogdanov believed that if there was extraterrestrial life out there, then they must be socialist. Because he believed that there was no way a species could possibly become interplanetary with a self-destructive system like capitalism. And in order to collaborate and become an interplanetary species, they must have developed some sort of socialistic system. This is not actually to be taken seriously, just something funny I would share. Given that the space colonization of asteroids is not the same thing as colonization of other people, a more legitimate concern, however, regarding space colonization is the geopolitical implications of it. Ideally, the cosmos should be a military-free zone, but as soon as competition between different countries over asteroid resources becomes a factor, then superpower countries might begin to draw up borders to carve out pieces of the solar system for themselves. For instance, China and the United States wanting to mine the same asteroids could lead to them dividing up the area and might even build military bases on the Moon or Mars. Preferably, the best scenario for intergalactic astropolitics is that there is a global treaty mediated by some sort of institution like the United Nations that ensures space as a common military-free zone that no one can monopolize. Okay, so these were the main arguments that I could find against space exploration. Now let's look at some of the most common arguments in favor of space exploration. Number 1. Commercial space travel In my opinion, the business of space travel itself is one of the more dumb and consequential reasons for space exploration. Creating businesses for rich people to spend exorbitant amounts of money just to travel to space and see the stars for fun sounds pretty useless to me. This is one of the goals of billionaire Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic Company and Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin Orbital Reed project. They aim to sell tickets to visit space that could potentially cost up to a million dollars. In my opinion, this is mostly dumb bougie decadence that serves nobody except the ultra-rich and is largely a waste of fuel and resources that we could allocate to other missions. Space travel should be reserved for scientific missions that benefit humanity as a whole. Which brings us to the next cause for space exploration. Asteroid mining. Within many asteroids, there exists a superabundance of essential natural resources that we could use on Earth, including nickel, iron, lithium, cobalt, platinum, and many more. Whether platinum group metals useful in electronics, lithium and cobalt useful in electric cars, iron and platinum useful in robotics, asteroid mining has the potential to raise our standards of living here on Earth. If you want to automate more of the drudgerous labor in society, reduce working hours, all while expanding economic output, then we will need the raw materials like platinum, cobalt, and many more to power the robotics needed to complete these tasks. The raw materials used to build robots and labor-saving technologies can't just come from anywhere. People also tend to forget that green technology, such as electric vehicles, also require an insane amount of raw materials like cobalt and lithium. It's got to come from somewhere. Earth's natural resources are finite and are often environmentally taxing to extract. Surprisingly, there is actually a lot more precious metals on Earth than anywhere in our solar system, but most of these metals are all sunk into our planetary core. Not only that, but mining natural resources on Earth tends to be very environmentally destructive and often involves some highly exploitative labor. And within our extractive capitalist system that exists now, imperialist powers are likely to resort to military coups or foreign interventions just to topple governments so that they can continue to exploit their natural resources as they have in the past. Like Bolivia, Chile, Venezuela, and much of Latin America as well as Africa. But the question is whether asteroid mining is feasible with our current technology. Is it safe to mine them? What about the fuel needed to get there and bring the materials back? We actually haven't figured out a reliable method to safely mine asteroids, but experts say that it's only a matter of time before we do figure out a way to do so. Regardless, we should attempt to get the raw materials needed for green energy infrastructure and robotics from uninhabited asteroids instead of exploiting labor in mines in the global south. 
However, under a privatized capitalist system, asteroid mining, even if successful, would probably lead to even more disastrous inequalities and an ever more powerful class of oligarchs. You would probably then get some of the most powerful mega corporations in history, akin to the Dutch and British East India companies in the past. The privatization of the Milky Way has already begun. In 2014, the bipartisan Asteroids Act was introduced into the US Congress. The legislation aimed to grant US corporations property rights over any natural resources, like the platinum group metals used in electronics that they extract from asteroids. Trickle down astronomics. A few years ago, Planetary Resources, an asteroid mining company whose billionaire backers include Larry Page, Eric Schmidt, and James Cameron, plans to launch satellites to look for valuable asteroids in the next few years. Other US firms, such as Deep Space Industries, have similar ambitions. Famous investors are even hopping into the mix. Investor Kathy Wood, head of ARK Invest, launched a space exploration exchange-traded fund, where people can invest their money into a variety of companies that are invested in asteroid mining and commercial space travel. Some sensationalist articles on asteroid mining will tell you that an asteroid could be worth approximately $20 trillion, but the exact value is very hard to determine. So yeah. We need to overcome capitalism if you want asteroid mining to actually be a collectively beneficial endeavor, where the proceeds of the space economy are distributed widely, rather than being owned by a couple of oligopolies. But if the left rejects space exploration completely, we then abandon its fate to the will of private interests. Without an alternative, futuristic, egalitarian vision of space, space nerds will be lured into the faux techno-utopianism of Elon Musk or the national chauvinism of the right. Sharing the benefits of space exploration is key to expanding economic democracy on a galactic scale. The global left should demand the creation of some sort of independent galactic wealth fund to manage the proceeds of asteroid mining resources on behalf of all human beings. This would distribute the wealth collected from these resources in the form of a sovereign wealth fund, which countries like Norway already use to socialize and deliver oil revenues to their citizens. As the space economy continues to grow, social dividends from the Galactic Wealth Fund could provide the basis for a quite literally universal basic income. So essentially, rather than escaping Earth, we can look at asteroid mining as a way to help life on Earth by combating resource scarcity and allowing us to have much greater abundance and better technology, all while polluting the Earth significantly less. However, some pessimists think that the Earth is doomed no matter what and that we should seek to escape Earth and build life on a new planet. People like Elon Musk hold this view. It sort of reminds me of the movie Elysium, where the most privileged people on Earth get to escape and live in outer space. It's quite terrifying and plagued with capitalist realism. In order to transcend Earth and become an intergalactic species, our only options would be to either colonize planets like Mars, or build O'Neill cylinders in space where only a few million people would be able to escape to, which would probably end up being the most rich and privileged individuals. But realistically, they would probably need to bring a bunch of working class people to do all the work for them, because that's how the rich get rich. The red planet of Mars is absolutely not habitable at all for a wide variety of reasons, and everything we have learned from researching Mars has reinforced the importance of protecting the fragile atmosphere of our home planet. The idea that space utopians like Elon Musk have is to one day terraform planets like Mars to make them habitable. Terraforming refers to the hypothetical prospect of geoengineering a planet in order to give them the conditions to make them habitable for humans. It's a bit complicated, so I'll link a video on the screen as to what exactly terraforming is, for any of those interested. But the actual science regarding the prospect of terraforming is very limited and remains extremely unlikely to actually happen. The astrophysicist Martin Rees gave a very succinct sobering analysis of the prospects of building space colonies on other planets, in his book On the Future, Prospects for Humanity. Quote, Don't ever expect mass emigration from Earth. It is a dangerous delusion to think that space offers an escape from Earth's problems. We've got to solve these problems here. Coping with climate change may seem daunting, but it's a dawdle compared to terraforming Mars. No place in our solar system offers an environment even as clement as the Antarctic, or the top of Everest. There's no planet B for ordinary risk-averse people. So yeah, forget about humans living on Mars or Venus. For now at least. 
So far, between the arguments in favor of space exploration, the one for asteroid mining appears to be more legitimate, compared to the colonization of other planets, which appears very unrealistic. But lastly, there is one other argument in favor of space exploration that I think needs to be noted. Scientific discovery. Space science is Earth science. Astronomy is not something inconsequential or irrelevant to our lives on Earth. Learning about space can help us learn a lot about Earth and our place within the universe. There must be an alternative socialist vision for space exploration that would enable us to reach our full potential to venture into the unknown. This is also an existential argument for space exploration, which is about public works and education. Peering into the void of space inspires some of the deepest questions facing humanity. Who are we? Where do we come from? What exists around us? What is our fate? To conclude, space exploration may or may not lead to the expansion of humanity. However, if we don't at least try, what we do know for sure is that the fate of humanity is dependent on the fate of the Earth. Thus, we are left with the political choice of fighting for an alternative socialist vision of space exploration, where we collaboratively explore the depths of the cosmos, expand the frontiers of human knowledge, and share the asteroid wealth that space exploration could bring us. Or we can just sit around and allow space to be co-opted by self-interested billionaires looking to turn the cosmos into commerce. Thank you for watching this video. If you are new here, be sure to check out my older videos and hit the notification bell to get reminded whenever I upload. I especially recommend these old videos of mine if you haven't watched them already. Lastly, this content would not be possible without my wonderful patrons, especially these generous individuals. Special shout out to Butters, Noam Chomsky, Jessica C, J Alphabet 89, Michael Porter, Grau 13, Demonic Tree Hugger, Andrew, and Sylvain Cloutier.